Fire Commissioner Laura Cavanaugh is the woman you see at the scene of some of the city's worst fires, lamenting the loss of life and serious injuries to New Yorkers caused by lithium ion battery fires. And I want to read you these statistics because they're truly frightening. Fires of lithium ion batteries have killed 17 people in New York, injured 124, and you've had to fight 239 difficult fires, fires that are difficult to put out. What does that say to you as the commissioner trying to stop this from happening? Yeah, I think that's why you heard, you know, a lot of people have noted the, the change in my tone on Monday when we had that uh, press conference following the tragic fire with the West family is really just me being, you know, really tired of seeing this happen. Um, it's killing New Yorkers. It's putting our firefighters in tremendous danger. And, you know, we've asked and passed for most of the legislation that we've seen. And, you know, while I think that might address it in the future, what I felt like is people don't know that right now they have a ticking time bomb in their home. And so, you know, what I think what I'm really urging is in addition to everything we're doing in the long term is right now to make sure people are taking stock. Do they have these devices in their home? Are they safe? And if they're not, or if they don't know, to get them out of their homes. You know, we don't want to go in the holiday season and see people buying what they think is a great gift for their kids, say, and see a tragedy occur. I, we just really can't take any more of it. I've also wondered whether New York has a bigger problem than other cities. Do you talk to your counterparts in other cities, and are you hearing that it's just as bad other places, or do we seem to have more of these fires? So I, I think it's both. Everybody is seeing it. This is most definitely a nationwide issue. You do see it more in cities, primarily just because asking someone to put a device outside is just much harder in New York City, harder in Chicago, you know, harder in, in Philly. Um, but we are actually seeing a lot of the same things. I think why you're hearing about it from New York first is because we're bigger, we are more dense, and also, you know, to credit my fire marshals, they have a really robust operation. They've been tracking these devices and what they can do for the last couple of years. Most cities do not have that sort of infrastructure to actually investigate fires in that way. So what we found is when we went and talked to them and told them what the signs of an e-bike fire were, they actually went back and said, yes, we were having these. We just didn't realize what they were. So this is definitely a nationwide issue. So my question to you and the next question is that you're now going after national corporations, the people who deliver food or the re online retailers and saying, you got to do something. Mm -hmm. Talk to me about that. Why is it is the blame on them? So I think the blame is not only on them. I think what concerns me and why I've called them out is that to fix this, we have to do everything, one, and I expect them to come to the table and they, you know, they haven't yet and I'd like them to. But also two, we need to think about the fact that these are real people. And so a lot of people talk about compliance or future laws. And what I'm trying to say to uh, the Amazons and the Alibabas and the Uber Eats of the world is there are things they can do right now whether or not they're complying with the law. Like what? So for Amazon, they know every person they've sold a device to. They could go back and notify those people that those devices are dangerous and might be so in their home now. So you're saying they're selling dangerous lithium ion yeah, batteries? Yeah, we, we have seen... Can't you stop that? So we actually, the Consumer Product Safety Commission is um, bringing a lawsuit against them, which we've helped provide them with data. And so we know that that will bring them into compliance. We also have seen them begin to pull these devices down. But again, it's all about reminding corporations like that these are people dying in fires. There's something they could do today that might save someone tomorrow. And that might be taking a device down. It might be sending a notice to someone who bought one of these before they were regulated. Or it might be putting money into a PSA to warn New Yorkers that these could be dangerous. So we're asking them to do more than is just required of them by law, but to really think about these as people and to join us in this fight. So is the allure of buying these things online the fact that they're cheaper? Yes. So I mean, I w would say certified devices aren't necessarily expensive. So it's not a matter only of money, but what I'd say is that, like so many of us, these are just widely available. They're all over uh, all these online sites. They're very cheap, and they look innocent. You know, a lot of them are just like their scooters or other devices that are marketed for kids, um, and it's so cl easy to click add to cart and get things these days that people are not thinking that they have to do sort of their own rigorous homework before they buy something online. Are you also worried about the repair shops that seem to 
be able to open these lithium ion batteries and yeah. jigger with them to make them last longer? Is that going on as well? And if so, how do you stop it? So we are extremely concerned. That's a very different market. That's the market that's really catering to the delivery workers. And so that's where we're asking the online delivery companies to work with us. Um, but one thing I should say that's so critical to point out, even a safe battery, if tampered with, becomes unsafe. And so that's really what makes a lot of those repair shops, if they're not regulated, really dangerous, is they may be taking safe batteries and tampering with them to make them bigger, to make the bikes go faster, and they now have something that's dangerous on their hands. So is it also compounded by the fact that we now have a large migrant population? I mean, if you walk by any of these migrant hotels or shelters where migrants are living, and you see an entire block long of these bikes, mm -hmm. and you wonder how many of them are safe, how many of them aren't safe, and how do you reach them when there may be a language barrier? Exactly. I think what I'd say, though, is it's not the migrants who are bringing the problem. There's demand in the market to have that many people making deliveries in New York City. And the reason that demand is there is because it's so easy to get things through the apps now. And so that's really why we want to talk to the apps, right? Not only have they created a market where people demand most things be delivered now to their home in really rapid time, but also they know who is making these deliveries. So they know where those workers are. They should be able to help us reach them and say, is your bike safe? If it's not safe, can we trade it in? Uh, are there safe ways to charge it? So, you know, again, they have reached out to us and um, we are hoping to do more with them uh, and see if they can get to the, the end worker who's using the bike. Can the Consumer Product Safety Council do something to limit the sale of these bad batteries? So they can do two things. One, they're doing right now, they're making voluntary standards and issuing them, and they are suing some of the companies that are engaging in this very dangerous work. But the other piece that both we and they would like to see done is to have Congress pass national standards. That is something that we and they cannot do alone. And if Congress passes those that would take effect, anything coming into the country would then be seized at the ports. What if, you know, what if we did a buyback and offered to, offer to buy back bad batteries and replace them with good batteries? So we have a small program like that. I would like to see it expanded. I would actually like to see the delivery companies join us in expanding that because that would help the people who have them right now. And what about the idea of registering e-bikes so that you at least know where they are? It's, yeah. It seems like it's a controversial bill. Yeah, I think it's been controversial in the past. What I'd like people who are thinking about it to consider is that one of the biggest problems we have is these are so heavily destroyed by fire by the time we find them. We often can't tell what maker model they are, where they were purchased. Some sort of registration, whether it was at point of sale or elsewhere, some kind of VIN like we have on a car, would help us understand where the bad batteries and bikes are coming from and where the good ones are coming from. And that would make a big difference in enforcement. Commissioner, thank you so much. It's a yeah. really important thing that you're yeah. doing. Thank you for bringing attention to it. And we're going to have to leave it there right there for now, but we'll be right back.